some of the greatest businesses in the history of America have started when the economy was bad or the economy was down. Hey guys, on this video, I want to talk to you about how to be prepared and be ready for a bad economy. When things go down, things go crazy, things go haywire. Like what are we doing to actually make sure that we are prepared and we're not going to lose our shirt, so to speak, right? We're not going to go crazy and panic and get, let's, how do we prepare for it? Because things go bad all the time, right? Unemployment goes up, the Federal uh, Reserve raises rates or they lower rates or spending, consumer confidence goes. How do we handle this when things are haywire, right? That's what I want to talk about on this video. If you get anything from it, smash the like button for me, share the video, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. But number one, the first thing is this, guys, do not panic. We cannot afford to be nervous or scared because when we're nervous and scared with money, we make rash, bad decisions, right? Just because it's a bad economy doesn't mean you got to follow it with bad decisions. We have to steer clear of these scare tactics that we see that will happen on your, your YouTube feed, right? Your social media platforms, your, your news stations, right? They're going to feed you a lot of fear when a bad economy happens because people will tune in and watch, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to be very, very careful to watch out for the signs of everybody telling you, you need to be scared. You just got to stay focused on your goals and focused on what you're trying to achieve with your money. But don't get to the point where you're just like, everything's haywire, so you're going to go haywire, and you never want to mix emotions with money. Because oftentimes when you mix emotions with money, you make bad decisions. So during a time when things are going crazy, things are bad, a bad economy, stay level-headed. Don't panic right? Another thing you want to do, second thing you want to do is you want to build up your money. There may be some job loss if unemployment rates skyrocket all of a sudden. Can you sustain a period of time without getting a paycheck, right? Do you have emergency money saved up? This is why I always say, if you want to prepare for a bad economy, you have to have three to six months at least of your emergency money saved up, of your need, your monthly needs. So three to six months of your monthly needs saved up. Do you have it? And what I suggest is you delay some of those large purchases that you're thinking about and first get prepared for a bad economy before you go out and spend a whole bunch of money on a vacation or a whole bunch of money on something you really don't need. Worry about your needs first. That's why it's very, very important, guys. A bad economy is going to shake you. It's going to have you. But if you have a cushion of money to sustain you, you're going to feel better. And if you have if you have an emergency fund, I would suggest putting it in a high yield savings account. So you're at least getting some type of increase return on your money right now. But here's the kicker, though. If you don't want to put it in a high yield savings account, I'm not mad at you. You might just want to have your money sitting near you in a bank near you. I'm OK with that, too. But you got to have access to cash in case you need it. Guys, if you're getting anything out of this video, do me a favor and smash that like button below. Also, please share this video with your friends, your family, and your network of people. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, please consider subscribing to my channel. Now, let's get back to the video. The third thing you want to do to prepare yourself for a bad economy is get in the mind frame, the mindset that you're always going to dollar cost average into the stock market. If the stock market goes crazy and drops down to nothing and becomes worthless, we're all in trouble. So it doesn't matter what you do. But if you just keep dollar cost averaging into the stock market while everything around you is going haywire in terms of a bad economy, we're talking about a bad economy, right? So if that's the case, I want you to continue to invest in the stock market, continue to be consistently and steadily putting your money into the stock market at your normal, regular pace. That's what we mean by dollar cost average. Just put the same amount in the stock market, no matter if the stock market's going way up or the stock market's going way down, you're still just plugging in the same amount of money. Don't You don't have to change your investing strategy because everybody around you or the situation around you is going haywire. The goal is to always be buy the assets. And I consider the assets being the stocks, the bonds, the ETFs, the index funds. You want to buy those assets low at a discount. And when things go haywire and people are panicking, a lot of times and the stock market drops, stocks are on sale and you're just steady buying, steady buying, 
right? But resist this urge that a lot of people have that they want to, when it, when the stock market goes down, they want to sell and get out of there and they end up selling low, right? When that's not the whole purpose in terms of a position in the stock market, the point is, is when everything goes crazy and the economy is down, just stay with your investing strategy, buy-in and buy-in, dollar cost averaging. And you can, I like to call it dollar cost average plus, right? So dollar cost average. And when you see things going down, you can buy a little more when things are down, when the market is down, but dollar cost average plus, right? Plus do a little extra buying if you want when stocks are on sale. Now, the fourth thing you got to think about is considering some diversification, considering other places to have your money before the economy goes bad, right? Consider, and I like to consider some real estate, adding some real estate to your portfolio if you don't already have some real estate. Right. And real estate could be your primary. I heard people say, well, don't put don't buy. Don't buy your own home. Just buy something and rent it out. No, listen, I don't care how you buy. Buy a piece of real estate. Right. Add real estate to your portfolio. Just think about adding that diversification so that you're not just only in the stock market, but you're also in real estate. And you might be saying to yourself, well, why is he telling us to buy real estate when the uh, interest rates are high? Well, right now, interest rates are hovering around the six to seven to eight percent mark, right? Somewhere in six and a half, seven and a half. Listen, for a 30 year fixed, listen, the stock market interest rates are not terribly high in the history of interest rates. They're just high because we're used to a 10 or 12 year period where interest rates were historically low in the twos and threes for 30 year fixed mortgages, right? That's incredibly low. But right now it's six to six and a half, six and a half, seven and a half percent. Rates are not, you know, totally low. They're not incredibly high like they could have been. But when rates, if you buy now and rates go down, you can refinance. If you buy now and rates go up, you're in good shape because you bought it at six and a half to seven percent interest rates. The point in real estate is add the piece of real estate to your portfolio when you're ready to add real estate to your portfolio. When you're ready, not necessarily trying to time the market to get in and get out in terms of real estate. Just make sure your your credit is right. Your income is right. You've got all your foundation of your personal finances together, meaning you got an emergency fund. You've got, you know, you've got some investments. You're putting a large amount. You have you have very little, if any debt. Right. So the way you prepare yourself to get these extra assets this, to diversify your portfolio is to make sure that you're ready to get those assets. Right. And then you also, when you buy real estate, you may want to consider strongly having some cash to put down on the real estate. So you're not just buying real estate with no money. And I know people say you can buy real estate with no money down, but yeah, but what happens when you have a $10,000 repair that takes place six months after you purchase it, or you have some tenants in there and the tenants move out. Now you don't have any rent coming in for, for three months or four months. You have to be prepared. That's why I say have money if you're going to add real estate to your portfolio, but that's a great way to prepare for a bad economy is to have stocks here, real estate here right? One goes bad, the other goes good. One goes good, the other goes, whatever it is, you're preparing, you're hedging yourself against feeling the brunt and the pain of a bad economy when you add something like that to your, your portfolio, add some real estate. Now, the final thing is this, number five, is to start a recession-proof business. When things go down or people start panicking, that's really an opportunity to meet a need, not an opportunity to go take advantage of people, but it's an opportunity to feel or fulfill a need. When things go bad, there's always a, a, something that's missing, a, a void that's missing. You need to be thinking about, hey, should I start a business when the economy starts to go bad? Some of the greatest businesses in the history of America have started when the economy was bad or the economy was down. You have at that point, you have less competitors when the economy is down because everybody, most people are saying, I don't want to start a business. Man, the economy is so terrible. Maybe that's when you need to start a business, right? And when the market turns around, you're rolling because you already understand the business. You already understand your customer base. You already understand your marketing. You already understand some of these important things that, hey, when the market turns around, you're ready, you're rolling. You're right there where you need to be. You're in place. Again, many of the top businesses that we look at got started in the middle of a recession. You can find products and services that solves people's problems during a downturn in the economy. Maybe it's a, a, a product or a service or need that people actually have to have no matter what. 
even when the economy's bad, right? Transportation, food, healthcare, whatever it could be, something to think about. So I just wanted to give you some things, guys, that you can think about doing before the economy goes bad, how to prepare yourself and prepare your finances and prepare yourself mentally in terms of how you can handle a bad economy and how you can actually be ready for a bad economy. So if you got anything at all out of this video, guys, do me a favor, smash the like button, share the video. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hey, the best person to take care of the old you is the young you. Guys, do me a favor, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.